Hey, Mike. Hey, hey, buddy. What's going on? Guess what time it is on a Thursday evening. I think I know. Oh, it's Mike and Mish time. It's everybody's favorite time. We need to get some people in here in the viewing room That's while right. we wait on our guest of the evening, Mr. John Lee Chalbeck of BKFC. What do you have to say about that? Oh, I'm excited. Uh, the guy put on a good performance down at Knuckle Mania, and uh, I liked it. I loved it. It was the most uh, precise technical performance of the entire fight card, and we all know that. Um, John put on a put on a display, and he already has a fan in the chat room. Uh, I bet you you can guess who that is, there, Mike. Hmm. Does it rhyme with? <laughs> Dude, it's no, uh, he didn't. No, he didn't. Oh, look at that. It is it. I think the first name rhymes with Landon and the last name rhymes with Bambert. Yeah, Landon Bambert. Mm, That's Landon right. Landon Bambert. <laughs> that guy. Oh, uh, what's up, Joe Ivy? Welcome to the show. Two nights in a row. You are awesome, present and accounted for. We appreciate your support. We are waiting on the man himself, John Lee Chalbeck. We're going to have a lot of fun with him. He just happened to ent enter the green room right now. So before we bring the man on himself, let me do a quick uh, read of our sponsors because uh, we have to pay the bills. So first and foremost, Massage Therafix, Holding Hands Massage. They are registered with the Veteran uh, Department of Veteran Affairs. So soldiers and veterans, go ahead, go see your your provider, get a referral, go see Jackie. You know, schedule her schedule an appointment with her because she can uh, alleviate pain, uh, pinpoint chronic, you know, trigger point. Trigger points, pain, trigger points, Mike, what is it called? Trigger points, trigger point therapy. She could do body scans. She could fix chronic pain. Jackie is no bullshit. She is the real deal. Um, and our other sponsor is Killfoot Clothing, the uh, the makers of the, whoa, hey, hey, hey now, the makers of the very first uh, Mission Accomplished t-shirt, Killfoot Clothing, American made, veteran owned, veteran run, awesome company. They are the shit. So. Hey, and they are in the chat room too. What is going on? Kill foot fellas. Sam Sigler's in the chat room as well. Hey. Let's go ahead and get our guy on. What do you say? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's do it. All right. Welcome to the show, Mr. John Lee Chalbeck of the Bear Knuckle Fighting Championship. What is up, sir? How are you? Can you hear me? What, what, what's up, guys? Oh, you're very quiet, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're very, very low, though. Very low. You're quiet. I'm not sure how I can fix that. All right. Well, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I'm doing good. Uh, you know, I had a good day of training, you know, in between. You know, I spend the time with my kids that I like to. So, you know, every day is a positive day. Oh man, you you are very very quiet. Um, we're gonna try to work our way through this, but is there a volume on the headset that goes up? A uh, microphone volume, or or is hello? Can you guys hear me better now? Oh yeah, way better. Yeah, there we go. Okay. There we go. We'll now we're go, in business. We'll just go you without might. the uh, the headset. There you go. You, so you might just have to turn your volume down slightly on your phone, so because getting like a little reverberation there. Yeah, a little echo. Let's start. Right. Better. So, yeah, perfect. Um, so, right. how are you? Right, so, you um, you made your debut at BKFC at Knuckle Mania. Uh, you put on a hell of a performance against uh, Greg Rockhard Bono. Uh, tell us about your experience with the BKFC for the first time, as opposed to um, you know your experiences with your professional boxing career and your uh, MMA career. Um, I, I love the experience. Um, you know, it was everything that I hoped for and, uh, you know, all the questions I had for myself, um, were pretty much how my hands would hold up. You know, I had no other concerns really about the difference between boxing, MMA and bare knuckle, other than the fact that will my hands be able to hold up if I'm hitting them with, you know, power shots to the head and, um, you know, I liked the way it felt. Like, I really did. Like, nothing felt more satisfying than a bare knuckle hitting someone's face. Hell yeah. 
Yeah, I so we were there. We get to see it live, and uh, we were pretty impressed by your performance. So bravo on that. Uh, how was the whole event? How did it feel to you? Did you feel good walking down to the ring? Uh, how was the weight cut? Did you how much weight did you have to cut? Uh, was did it go well? And uh, the fight did it go the way you envisioned it? Um, yeah, I was walking around at one fifty two the whole camp. Um, you know, so, uh, I only had to cut about, you know, seven pounds, um, which wasn't that much. And, um, you know, really, I, I only had to do one bath and, uh, I was pretty much on weight and, uh, and then just like skim the rest of it, the rest of the day. And I came in even another pound lighter than I was when I got out of the bath. So, uh, yeah, I weighed in at 144.7, which, you know, which would have been championship weight at 145. I feel very strong at that weight, and uh, I'd like to stick there. As far as the event goes, um, you know, man, it was a it was something very special to me. You know, I've been hounding these guys for two years. Um, you know, just blowing up their social media. I went to a tryout. You know, I've done everything that they said they wanted me to do, and you know, I had four offers from these guys, and for some reason, you know that they've they've fallen through almost every time or you know it's just an initial verbal offer and i agree and then nothing comes through and so i was like geez you know i was starting to get frustrated but you know uh dave said i would eventually you know i i would fight on the page van zand card and man he was a man of his word so you know i've got no complaints and i'm ready to do it again you know i want to work my way up the rankings and you know fight one of these big name guys you know uh and when I beat them, you know, then, uh, you know, don't worry, we'll still have haters. <laughs> so when they, when you said that they had offered you a few fights already and they just didn't, they, they all fell through, were these names that were already on the roster that you were looking forward to fighting or were these guys making debuts like yourself? Um, I was offered the Luis Palomino debut, uh, debut Ooh. and I accepted and, um, you know, I was waiting for a contract and for some reason nothing ever came through. But, uh, you know, I, I guess there was a miscommunication between Dave and myself. And, you know, I want him to straighten out things with, you know, my manager. And he thought that, you know, what we had discussed was already good enough. So I don't know. I guess he was offended in some way. But, you know, uh, I said, oh, well, please forgive me. Give me another chance. You know, so. You know, Luis Palomino, you know, made his debut against, uh, you know, someone else. And I got to watch, you know, and, uh, you know, um, I eventually got my opportunity, you know. So, but, you know, I stayed the course and I stayed on those guys. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm ready for the next thing. You know, I, it, it doesn't really matter who they offer, it, offer me the fight, you know. I, I'd like it to be at 145, you know. Um, you know, I'd rather go. I'd rather fight a, a challenge and a bigger name and go up, obviously, you know, but if whoever they offer me, you know, I'm, I'm going to accept, but they know my minimum, my minimum fee, you know, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who it is. You know, I'm not going to take less money if he sucks or, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, vice versa. Nice. Um, so recently I saw on Facebook, it might have been posted to Instagram also, but uh, Tyler Goodjohn, he put out a video and he said that if I understood him correctly, he said that he would be ready for May. And there's a big card looking like it's coming out in May down in Miami. Hopefully that will be in May. It's big at the state uh, Dolphin Stadium. I'm sure you're aware of it. And you were in the comments and you put a little gift down there and it said, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> so, yeah, well, uh, I mean if Artem and Jason Knight, you know, and those guys aren't coming back that are, you know, above the rankings, you know, I'm not sure what Tyler Goodjohn is trying to fight at, you know, if he's 155 or 145, but I think BKFC is trying to, you know, I, you know, make him a bigger name, you know? So, you know, like I said, I think he's uh, an experienced bare knuckle fighter and uh, he was a champion over in England. So, I think that's a step up in competition, you know, which is what I'm looking for. You know, I've got nothing respect for all fighters that are willing to make the walk to get in there. You know what I mean? You know, I have respect for them. You know, I may not want to, you know, conversate with some of them, 
you know, but at the same time, you know, uh, I, I do have respect for all fighters that will put their life on the line for the entertainment of others, you know. You know uh, Tyler Goodjohn is uh, recently, uh, I don't know if he took a time, took some time off after his fallout with the DKFC, but recently he's putting a lot of training videos out. He's looking like he's getting ready back uh, for a comeback. You have continued to be, you look like you train like crazy all day, every day. So are you training to stay ready in case of a phone call? Would you take a short notice fight? Like, would you fight April 30th if they called you right now with an opponent? Or would you rather wait until Miami in front of a large crowd and fight somebody like a Tyler Goodjohn? Um, I would be ready for April 30th if they called me for sure. Um, my daily schedule is, you know, for a lot of these guys that say that, oh, I'm in fight camp. Um, that just means that they don't work. They're not working out. Like my daily schedule is most of these guys fight camp. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm always ready. You know, I did eat whatever I wanted after the fight for a little bit. So I gained a little bit of weight back. But as far as training, you know, I've stayed consistent. And, um, you know, I've been uh, carrying on as usual, you know. So I would be ready for an April 30th fight. You know, I would rather fight in Florida, in Miami, at the uh, big Dolphins uh, arena. You know, I could have my cousins there and their friends. And, you know, I, I actually sold a lot of tickets from Michigan the last fight as far as guys coming from out of state, you know. So um, I think I'll do the same and I'll have kind of a, an okay crowd for some guy that lives in Michigan. Uh, you know, I don't know. Coincidentally, your shirt that you're wearing right now, I don't know. <laughs> Is a dolphin. What is it. that? Is that a premonition? Is that like uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what is that? Uh, foretelling. That's the future, right there. So yeah. you're speaking of it, and boom, are those the new T-shirts that? Uh, um, my uh, I had a logo uh that um my dad inspired. Um, it was a Poseidon, is a Poseidon boxing logo. But my yeah. daughter, she's a real hustler. You know, she's only ten, but she was like had her own money and she wanted to invest in her own logo. Um, nice. that wasn't anything to do with my logo. So it's a pink dolphin with boxing gloves coming out of it. And yeah, one of the styles of shirts that we have is, uh, this one. So like, I mean, she wanted to invest her own money in the logo, which, you know, is like 50 bucks. And then she wanted to put money in towards, you know, the shirt so that she could get a percentage of every shirt. So she's a real hustler just at 10 years old. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you see recently that, um, I think I read it maybe even today or yesterday that Palomino, who, of course, if anybody's watching right now, Palomino is the 155 champion. He he said that he would like to stay active and he'd be willing to go down to 145 and up to 165. So maybe one day that fight does come to fruition. You know what I mean? Like the, I just thought of that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's a be he's a, he's a beast wherever he goes, you know, whether it's 165 or 155 or if he can make 145 still, um, you know, yeah, I mean, it really, I, I'd like to stay dialed in. My body feels very, very good at 145. So I would like to stay dialed in and try to win the belt at 145 if they're having a tournament or whatever. And whoever is involved in that tournament is good with me. It really doesn't matter. You know, I heard Dat wants to come up or or Johnny or Artem or or Jason Knight or whoever they put in this tournament, you know, or maybe Luis waits for the winner of the tournament and then he comes down and tries to be champ champ. You know what I mean? So, you know, I think these are all things that could happen in the future. But, uh, you know, I know I, I want to stay dialed in at 145 unless they can, you know, get me, you know, uh, some extra extra money or something. I like it. I'll hey, go Mike. where the money is, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you got to pay the bills, man. You got to. You yeah, the man. They want me to go up table. to one seventy to fight Conor McGregor for a million dollars. You know what? I'll be one sixty nine. <laughs> yeah, Mike actually uh, pointed something out. You you had said Conor McGregor. I said, uh, who would you like to see come to the uh, BKFC? And you said Conor McGregor. Let's get this money. And somebody somebody wrote. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that, but actually it does. You know what I mean? Like, 
Yeah, if, well, I if mean, he did uh, come there, everybody would get rich. It does work like that, actually. I mean, uh, I mean, Floyd Mayweather has been proven that it has been working like that for a while. And while people really want to shit on him all the time, you know, he has beaten twenty two world champions. And but the the most profound thing is that they let him fight a debut guy who is an MMA guy. <laughs> And and half the world thought the MMA guy was gonna win in a boxing match, and the MMA guy made his debut and made a hundred million dollars. You know, Conor McGregor is the most efficient boxer in the history of prize fighting. Like he's zero and one, and he made a hundred million dollars. So right. you know, the proof is in the pudding. That is how it is. If you got Conor McGregor to come over to do bare knuckle, whoever fought him is gonna get paid more than you know anyone else to fight anybody else that's just a fact so you know there, right now i think the big money guys are paulie and artem and jason knight you know or any of those guys that were involved in those big 145 uh fights and the two for people me, you anyways, just for me the two people you just mentioned paulie and artem are both famous because of conor mcgregor <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That is, that's true. That Nobody is. knew those two by name household. Now, people who are fans of the sport, but I'm New talking about general right? or casual type fans that just come for the big events, they did not know Artem Lobov and they did not know Pauli Malinaji before Malinaji trained with Conor McGregor. And same thing for Lobov, right. I mean, he's his training partner, but that's how they got their names out there uh, yeah. big time. Kept it. Lobov, in the spotlight. Lobov was the, uh, Lobov was the, the goat. Uh, well, no, he was the whole reason for the Dolly incident. They they, right. they they cornered Lobov in New York. Connor loaded up the jet and threw a Dolly through the window. And next right. thing you know, Artem, everyone knows Artem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Listen, hey, listen, guy, look, I'm a I'm a boxing coach of a bunch of MMA guys. So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I'm very I'm very aware of the differences between, you know, pugilism and then like what, you know, many mixed martial artists have in their minds as boxing or you know i think it's always funny how they will say you got those hands you know usually it's my footwork that puts me in a better position you know but but um but yeah you know uh i think i think floyd proved that uh you know just be efficient as possible you know he fought a guy who knew he knew he was gonna beat he knew he would drag him out and drag the fight on and make it entertaining and he would make as much money as possible off a guy who's never even fucking boxed before. You know what I mean? So, you know, hey, you know, I follow the Floyd Mayweather, um, you know, uh, policy. <laughs> yeah. We wanted we wanted to play a little game with you real quick before we bring your uh, your student on, or your teammate, student, whatever whatever you want to call Alicia. Yeah. Hey, she, she, she would be my coach, too, if we were wrestling. She, you know, Hell she yeah. Would be, She'd be telling me what to do. <laughs> she, I'm sure she tosses tosses some people around in that gym. I mean, that girl is super powerful for her size for sure. We're going to talk about that. But what we've been doing, because it's March, we've been playing March Madness brackets, right? So we're going to do a little fun thing with you. We made a little bracket here of the current 140 pound fighters in the in the uh, BKFC. We're going to throw the throw the matches up there. You're going to tell me who you think wins, and then uh, the. The winner at the end here is who we want to see you fight. Okay, first first fight. I'm starting to lose. I'm starting to lose you guys. Oh no! no. We back? No, right at the good part. You back? All right, March Madness, 145 division. All right. Go. First fight: Artem Lobov versus Johnny Bedford. Johnny Bedford moves up to 145, and they fight. Who wins? Um, I think Johnny wins. Um. Just because uh, I think Artem's really sloppy and he just kind of, you know, throws and hopes stuff lands. I think Johnny uh, has, you know, a lot more experience and also, you know, more like tactics, you know, when he's in there. You know, he has more purpose where Artem's just kind of flailing around. Yeah, he's throwing Ar them power shots out there and just chuck and pray. All right, Mike, are you keeping track of who he's saying? I am, absolutely. Right, second fight. Pauly Malinaji versus Jason Knight. Ooh, um, yeah, that's a good one. You know, I, uh, I think, you know, if Pauly doesn't break his hand, he should be able to piece up, um, and win rounds against, uh, Jason. I think Jason's really tough and he'll try to make it, you know, rough as possible. And 
I think it, that would be just a matter of who implements their game plan and the BKFC rules uh, more. I think I would have to lean more towards um, Polly, I guess. He went with the pugilist. There we go. All right, here we go. Uh, Adam Pellerino, Pellerano and Tyler Goodjohn. Um, Tyler Goodjohn, for sure. All right. No, and- no, no, offense to, no offense to Adam. You know, I've been talking with him and um, – you know, I hope to have that fight in the future because he's ranked ahead of me at number four. So I guess in a perfect world, if I can't get Artem or Jason Knight, I'll get Adam next so that, you know, I would like to win that fight and be number four. And then I'll be closer to number one in the belt. Maybe Adam, April 30th, Tyler Good, John in May. I don't know. Quick turnaround. Here we go. <laughs> hey. Last one, a man you don't want to mention and Rusty Crowder. What do you got? Um, well, I just want I just want to say that um, <laughs> I, I, at a, even after all the negativity and bullshit, I did wish Brandon Lambert a, uh, a happy birthday yesterday or whenever his, his birthday was the other day. <laughs> so uh, happy birthday. But I think Rusty Crowder takes this one, um, you know, uh, uh, because um, I wasn't, you know, too impressed with the, the effort that Brandon Lambert put on, you know, especially after, you know, listening to his story. All right, and then round two, what do we have, Mike? Johnny Bedford versus who? Paulie Malinaji. Didn't we already do Johnny Bedford? Yeah, so it was Loboff versus Bedford. You picked Bedford, oh, so gotcha. and now now they moved on to. So now we're on the second round. Second round, fights. Johnny Bedford versus well, Paulie I mean, Malinaji. Uh, I'll be I'll be honest. Like I uh, usually, you know, I'm gonna go with the pugilist. You know, the pure pugilist, but um. You know, I'm not so sure, you know, uh, Polly can bust up Johnny like that did, you know. So, um, you know, I think I'll I'll take take Johnny on this one in the underdog, you know, trying to steal some of uh, Polly's money. <laughs> All right. So you took Johnny and to see who fights Johnny in the final Tyler Goodjohn versus Rusty Crowder. Oh, Tyler. Oh, Ty. Oh, I see how this went. Yeah. Tyler Goodjohn would smash him to bits, as he would say. <laughs> <laughs> that smash ge- to bits. He'd smash that geezer to bits. And then, so that makes the final to see who fights John Lee Chalbeck in the world title match. Yep. Johnny Bedford versus Tyler Goodjohn. Who wins that one? Uh, I think, uh, I think, um, oh, oof, man, you put me in the hot seat. You know what? I uh I think I think in the future at some point if we all stay the course, you know, all of us are going to meet um you know, so it really doesn't matter, you know, but I uh I think Tyler Goodjohn uh tries to outbox him and stay away um and uh I think he wins rounds. Nice. All right, so it's you and Tyler Goodjohn. Look at that. We we See? Look at we, it. We saw the future, my friend. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> hey, I mean, that's the way we're, we're going to have to mail this to you. I mean, it's, <laughs> see, it, that's how it was kind of set up. So you yeah, we got it. it. We'll, we'll, we'll fax that to it. And then, <laughs> and then at the end, after Luis Palomino beats Pauli Malinaji in the super fight that you know that they're going to do just because it's Pauli, even though he's 0 and 1, you know, uh, you know, they're going to – I can see that happening, um, you know, if uh, they're trying to build up a big-name fight for Luis. Nice. Um, so you train over in, in Brighton, right? Is that where, where your gym is in Brighton? And you have uh, – so you have Chalbeck Boxing, and you're fighting out of – it's Team SFS, which is Scorpion Fighting System – Right. right. There's a here. There's a whole umbrella at the Michigan Institute of Athletics, yeah. um, which is the building. And then Scorp Team SFS Scorpion Fighting System is our fight team. OK. And then Chalbeck Boxing is the boxing section of it. And then we have like bent yoga and there's Perez Taekwondo, you know, so there's um there's a quite a big umbrella underneath uh, the Michigan Institute of Athletics, which is in Brighton which is where Alicia and I both train every day, pretty much all day long. I, I see Alicia Perfect. in the morning, at noon, at night, you know, just, you know, she's one of the, the full-time fighters there. And she nice. is the world champion. She is the 105 world champion for Invicta FC currently. Do you guys have any other champions in the house or is she the, is she the, 
she the king or the queen, should I say? Well, and, and don't forget, she won the Kunlun, uh, the Kunlun World Championship mm -hmm. at 125, I think it was, um, a few years ago before coming back. So she's yep. the real champ champ. And, um, you know, I expect, you know, when she goes into the UFC, um, that she'll, she'll become champion there, too. She has a very uh, distinct style and build that I think can really work for her and you know, she can be a combination of, you know, a female Mike Tyson and, um, you know, someone that'll just pick you up and slam you on your fucking head. Yeah. Unbelievable oh, yeah. amount of power. Why don't we, why don't we go ahead and bring on Alicia half pint Zapatilla, the champion of the world. Here she yep, is. One of the most, one of the most dangerous, dangerous girls in the world. And uh, definitely one of the most harding, hardest working women I've ever met, you know, or been around. So <laughs> she's pure positivity to be around and, um, you know, like, uh, you know, enjoy your podcast. I'm going to take off. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Don't, we can't don't, let you go. We can't don't let you take oh, off no. just yet. No, 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 no. Uh, no, we, no, no we need no, no, you no. here for a few minutes. Yes. Before. Oh, gotcha. be, okay. Before, okay. Alicia, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on tonight. Thank we you. are excited to Thank talk to you. Um, before we get to know Alicia, you know, well, we need to figure out who the smartest person in the room is between fighter and coach. I think it is time, Mike. What do you say? <laughs> it is time. It is time uh, for that is not it. Oh, coach versus fighter, useless information content. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna, the, um, I should destroy her in this. Okay, this, well, this is... All right. Coach versus fighter. The coach, of course, is John Lee Chalbeck, and the fighter is the champion of the 105-pound division in Invicta FC, Alicia half pint Capitilla. Number one question on our use... The way this is going to go is closest without going over. Okay. Mm -hmm. if you guys actually know any of these answers will be extremely, <laughs> yeah. extremely impressed. Number yeah, one, I'll go with the first one. Mike Tyson has 58 fights. How many did he win by knockout? Start with the, okay. Do you have your answers? Yes. Alicia, do you have your answer? Sure. We'll let you go first. Alicia. Um, Ladies first. I'll go with 50. John? Ooh. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say 48 then. Ooh. Oh. Mike, Mike, what is the answer? The answer is 44. Woo. That is one point for the coach. Number two. <laughs> Mike, what do you say? All right. How many passengers fit on a 747 airplane? <laughs> Alicia? <laughs> Um, this is the big one. This is kind of big. It's, it's a big plane. Yeah. Huge. Okay. It's like, bigger this, than your standard like Southwest. Or... Would this be like one that you're like riding to like Japan or China or something? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it has the big top. Yeah. It's big. Okay. Oh God. Fuck. Four hundred. Ooh, John. Um, I'm gonna say uh, three twenty-five. And the uh, answer is 524 passengers. Damn. Alicia with the point. It is right. one to one. one Number one. three, how many people are on Earth right now? Roundabout. Alicia, what is the population of the planet Earth? Um, I'm probably going to way lowball this. 3.8 billion. Oh, oh, John? It's uh between 7 and 8 billion. Ooh. Wow, so good. Okay. Mike, tell him the answer. 7.674. <laughs> wow. Billion. Wow. That's that's two points for the coach. Number four. Go ahead, Mike. If you took Texas and dropped it boop into China, how many would you need to fill up China? How many Texases? <laughs> good question. These how many are really, I? Is these that are really good just plural questions, guys. <laughs> How many Texases would you need to fill up the country of China? 50. How about you, Alicia? 60. Oh, Ooh. you both went way over. Way <laughs> over. 
I don't think anyone gets a point for this one. Yeah, the answer is 14. Oh, dang. All right. China's not as big as I thought it was. (laughs) Uh, Kyle, Kyle, we still giving a point to John for that? For being no, no, nobody gets a point. You both no went point. Yeah, it's Way it's like far. Price is Right. Yeah, you right, can't right. <laughs> Number five. How much money did Netflix make in the year 2019? Oh, God. they didn't have the 2020 results out yet. So sorry, Alicia. You want to go first? Twelve million. John, <laughs> I feel like I feel like I want to guess. Like try to guess as close as possible, but. I know that she really lowballed it, so I just gotta say like just a little bit higher, and I got this point for sure. But I'm gonna show my integrity and really try to guess. And I'm gonna say uh, fifty billion. Mike, it is twenty-five billion. Holy cow! Oh. So, so that would mean that Alicia. Could go to- <laughs> Alicia. You got that because I was I because I oh, I overshot it. <laughs> they might have made that this year though with uh COVID and everything. I wouldn't be surprised. Right. All right. Two to two. Number All six, right. Mike. All right. What is the fastest speed limit in the world? And we're gonna go by miles per hour. Fastest posted speed limit in the world. What is and so this isn't ca- this isn't limit? counting the one with no speed limit. Thank you. That's no, 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 the, the autobahn does not count. There are gotcha. signs. There are signs up on this highway for this speed limit. What does it say? Eighty. Probably not going to hear it. John. One hundred and ten miles an hour. Ooh, oh, Kyle, yeah. the answer. The answer is 99 miles per hour in the United Arab Emirates. Unbelievable. You were close, Alicia. Nice job. What Number was it? T- I, I totally missed it. You guys glitched out. 99 miles per hour. 160 kilometers per hour in the United Arab Emirates. Mm-hmm. All that matters is that I won that one. Um, yeah. You won that one. You just took the lead. It was. Num- it's actually 160 kilometers okay. per hour. Num- Number seven. I'm, I'm losing here. Oh, oh no! Oh. I like how you guys coordinated t-shirts. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. How many people work at Walmart in the world? A million. God, these are such good, pointless <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> John, she says a million. What do you got? Um, she said a million. I'm gonna say uh, three hundred thousand. Oh, okay. Well, Alicia, you're gonna take that one because it is two point two million. Two point two million Walmart workers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Number eight, Mike. Go ahead. How tall was the tallest person ever? I'm going to say seven ten. John, she said seven ten. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say seven <gasps> eleven. That. <laughs> that's a that's a Price is Right move right there. That is a, that is a veteran Price is Right move, and the answer is eight foot eleven. <laughs> A man, a man by the name of Robert Wadlow was eight foot eleven. So it is four to three, Alicia. At the moment, we have two questions left. If Alicia wins this one, John, you're shit out of luck. Number nine, the double quarter pounder is the most expensive sandwich on the McDonald's menu. How much does it cost? Wait, just the sandwich or the meal? Just the sandwich. Just the sandwich. Double quarter pounder is the most expensive sandwich on that menu. How much does it cost? Four ninety nine. Seven dollars. Oh, boom! It's eight eight dollars, so it's probably seven ninety nine. Really. So Alicia is officially smarter when it comes to guessing (laughs) than her coach. Dang it. Bonus, true, bonus question, think, right? I guess they've taken too many punches. Listen, we're going to give two points 
Want to do it now? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The last question. Let's just throw the last question out. Do you guys know how many kids that me and Mike have combined in the two families? We're super famous. I mean, how do you not know that? Jesus. <laughs> do you guys? Do you guys have more kids than me combined? <laughs> I, I don't know how many kids you have. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say I think seven. so. I was gonna say eleven. It's four. It's, it's only four. four. Oh, just a little right. bit. Wow. Okay. Um, two like girls, two boys. We're, like we're out here just just populating the world over here, apparently. Yeah. All right, right. So I got four, and both of you guys have four, so we're tied. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you man. go. Well, that was fun. Alicia is actually smarter than you, John, when it comes to guessing random shit. <laughs> I'm never gonna let you guys don't even understand the type of ammunition that this is going to like just just awesome. wreck me every day. Like I'm this, glad we I'm contributed. Never, we're going to need to have this a redo like as quick as possible so I can redeem myself because this is horrible. Absolutely. <laughs> Anytime. Let us know. We'll make another uh we'll make another useless information round. We'll we'll do something fun. It was fun making these. Hell yeah. So, now that we... I know the type of questions you guys are going to ask, I'll be more prepared. Oh, we might change it up. What are you gonna do, man? Are you gonna just start, <laughs> what are you gonna Google random shit? Just yeah, random, like, random I think shit. We're all over the place. They have That's no correlation at all. <laughs> nope. Nothing, nothing coordinated at all. Before no. we let your coach go, Alicia, we want to let your coach talk some nice stuff about you. Go ahead, John. Tell us about Alicia. Well, like I said, Alicia's a full-time fighter. She's in the gym in the morning, um, you know, at lunch and in the evening, just like me. You know, she's trying constantly to uh, improve herself with her, not only the things that she's good at with her wrestling, but her boxing and her, her, her strength of speed and sport and, you know, her athleticism. And, you know, uh, like I said, she's one of the most dedicated and, you know, hardest working women I've ever met. And, you know, there's a reason she's the fucking world champion and one of the most dangerous women in the world. So uh, I have a feeling that, you know, once she gets to the UFC, she'll, she'll become a big star and she'll win the championship there too. And, you know, I'll be there to have witnessed the whole thing. So awesome. I'm very grateful for Alicia's positivity, just her, her normal positivity every day. Uh, I wanted to ask you something before, before you go, John, how long have you been her boxing coach? Because, um, you know, preparing for these interviews, we go back and we watch every single fight of every single person that we ever talked to, right? And you could totally see a difference between Alicia's start of her career, even her amateur now. Her her boxing has gotten a lot better. How long have you been uh, taking care I've of been, I've been with Scorpion Fighting System since 2012. Um, and a funny story, I remember um, when Alicia wasn't on our team, she had actually come over to me and borrowed a pair of pink gloves. Uh, she said, do you have an extra pair of MMA gloves? I don't have any for my fight. And I go, yeah, yeah, I have just the ones for you. <laughs> and so I uh, had a pair of pink gloves, and she uh, wore them, and she went and just beat the living shit out of this girl. And I was like, damn, those are my gloves. You know, so <laughs> I didn't know Alicia then. That was the first time I ever met her. But she came to our team shortly after. And so I think I would say about seven years now we've been together. Awesome. What do you think, Mike? That's that's great. I uh, I enjoyed having you on, John. Um, doing the thanks, guys. Doing the bracket, doing this uh, useless information uh, quiz there, uh, battle, and we'll have you back on to do it again. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, have fun, and I'll talk to you guys soon. All, All right. right. Looking forward to having you back. See you. All right. Hey, Alicia, that was your coach. I don't know if you knew that, mm -hmm. but. But you are, I don't know if you knew this, but you are so much smarter than your coach when it comes to useless shit. I know. It's really amazing. It's kind of Thank unreal. You. Thank you. I didn't know that before. Now look there's at one more thing that I have to hold above the boys. That's five to three. I mean, five to three. Get out of here. Get out of here. Joe. Get out of here. <laughs> How are you? And thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm doing very well. How are you? Oh, we're great. Great. As always.
Okay. Listen, listen, when we when we were like studying up on you, I mean, I knew you were the champ and I had seen a few of you in Victor fights, but I hadn't seen like all your earlier shit. I, I did not see the one that was like outside for Combate. I didn't see that one. I watched it. I actually wore this shirt. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Wrestle her. I got it from my friend Bjorn Gwigney, who is the um, amateur wrestling president for the state of Massachusetts, okay. Olympic wrestling uh, representative for the state of Massachusetts, and the CEO of uh, Beat the Streets New England. She's heavy into amateur wrestling, and your wrestling in your your wrestling is outstanding. And uh, I was like, man, I'm throwing the wrestle her shirt on for sure because mm -hmm. you fucking toss some people, you slam some people. And you're, sorry, you're this big, but you fuck some girls up that are much, much bigger than you. Thank you. John anyway. doesn't like to admit it, but I can beat him at wrestling and he knows it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it comes with the territory, I feel like, you know, uh, you know, boxer versus wrestler. I like to go with the wrestling base when I'm watching MMA. That is, yeah. seems to be very popular and it's, it's very dominant in fights, yeah. especially nowadays. A lot of people are going for that wrestling have that strong wrestling base. I mean, Definitely. what's better than pulling someone down and just beating the hell out of them? You oh, know, nothing. I, mean, <laughs> I do I've it every been, day. Yeah, I, I've been doing this. I've been wrestling for 21 years now. All of these girls, they're they're not going to catch up to the amount of work and the amount of dedication that I've put into this sport. Yeah, and the way you won the title uh, with the Von Flew mm -hmm. choke, it, it's the only one ever in Invicta, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. Was it? Yeah. It was unbelievable so did you uh did you know what you were doing when you did it um yeah i knew exactly what i was doing so <laughs> i um the first time i shot in on her and i took her down very easy to take down but i realized that she grabbed a guillotine and she held on it for mm -hmm. held on to it for a little bit too long and i decided that if next time i shot in she grabbed the guillotine i was just i was gonna von her and i was gonna use it to pass and she just didn't let go. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going to finish it. And then I felt her breaking and snap. Yeah. The commentators even for a second thought that you were getting choked out at first because you went for this. Did you go for the, cause I couldn't see up against the fence. It looked like you were going for the double the way your arms were. But then like when you got her, it was just a single and you brought her down and then she had you in a guillotine, or at least they thought she, she had you. And then as a couple seconds went by, it was like, Oh, wait a second. Actually, no. She's got yeah. her in what I like to call now the St. Prue choke, yeah. but, you know, Because I think that that good. The, the only commentator that caught on was Julie Kedzie. She, with the whole time, she's like, Alicia has a Von Flew. I think Alicia knows she has a Von Flew. Guys, Alicia's yeah. about to get this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like a, a turn, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then and then you went ahead and uh, tried to make um, Laura Sanko cry afterwards. That was real nice of you, Alicia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you you are i'll tell you right now you are unbelievably emotion like you are i think you call yourself an empath right I'm yeah, very like, much an empath. yeah it's pretty awesome i, I was like man she um she's a, she's a, like a, a little firecracker everybody if you haven't seen her fight you should go check it out so what are your plans you're going to dominate the uh the atom weight division a little bit for invicta and then try to get into that straw weight division in uh ufc that's the plan um, I, my plan's a little more in depth than that. So I'm going to defend my title at 105. I'm going to go up to 115 and win the 115 belt because there has never been a champ champ in Invicta. I want to cement my name in history. And then I want to go up to the UFC and I want to win the world title there. Um, so as John had mentioned, I won the Kunlun fight belt at 125 over in China. And for anybody who doesn't know what Kunlun fight is, that is the exact promotion that Weili, that Weili Zhang came up through. And um, I've studied her for years now. We fought on the same card. Um, we actually, there was talks of us fighting a long time ago. So I've been studying this woman and I know what I'm going to get myself up against, but I definitely know that I have what it takes to, to take it. I love it. Thank you. Uh, my wife is watching and she says that she fights all day and her hair still looks amazing. <laughs> kind of, kind of jealous. And um, I, want, I want you to know that your coach, uh, John, is in the comments as Facebook user because he did. He, <laughs> because John Lee Chalbeck did not grant permissions for us to see his name for a like, mystery. I mean, he wants to keep it a mystery, even though he was just on the damn show. Uh, it says, guys, I can beat her at wrestling. I'm a beast against 105 girls. Don't let her fool you. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, we, we won't even talk about it. He knows I can take him down. I have. I've proven it. But yeah. whatever. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So do you, do you have an opponent that you want to fight next that you're eyeing or? Um, I have an opponent that I'm eyeing. Um, I may or may not have a fight in the talks or mm-hmm. in the works that I'm not allowed to talk about. Damn. No, no, no. I just got off the phone with Invicta and you're allowed to talk with it. With us. <laughs> I got a text. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I got it on. It's right here. Yep. Oh, thank you. They, thank they you. said, they said, go ahead. Yep. <laughs> no. Wait, uh, it's no. right. Uh, if you listen. Oh, no, never mind. That's not the right one. Sorry. That was. <laughs> I've, I've definitely no. been watching film on somebody and I definitely have my sights set on somebody and I, I know it's coming next for me. Nice. That's awesome. Um, when is the next Invicta FD event? Is it? Uh, they are now going to a different streaming platform, and the streaming platform has not yet announced who it is or when their card is. So I'm, I, I don't know. I'm going to know when you guys know. Yeah, I thought they had said that for the time being they're going to go live on YouTube, which I thought was a great idea. Like, YouTube's free. So. Yeah even more eyeballs will be on you guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I, mean? it, it, I thought that was a great move, but if they haven't announced doing it. Some fights on YouTube and then some fights elsewhere. I don't know if it's going to be like an undercard, um, you know, main card type deal, but yeah. So I watched you um, doing one arm pushups that like, were like, oh, up yeah. under the thing. and I got to tell you that as a person that used to be a gym rat, it made me want to cry one. And I wanted to ask Mike, how many of those things do you think you could do? All right. Well, let's do it. Let me get this. Let me get this thing. And we're going to show you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do one. <laughs> not even one right now. I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. See, we do. So we're both in the military, right? Mm-hmm. We're both work together. And we're, we, we, we do the PT test like once a year. So once we do that PT test in October, Mikey doesn't do anything through March <laughs> because I don't like the cold weather here. I hate it. And I'm not, and I like to run a lot and I hate running in the cold. So do I. And I just say, you know what? I'll just take the, I'll take the winter off. I mean, no big deal. I do fine. <laughs> I so do you, fine. Spring, do summer. You, do you consider yourself like a gym rat? Like, uh, do you lift a lot of weights too? Or is it oh, most? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Especially because I know that I want to go up in weight. So, um, I've been getting stronger and I'm staying just as fast as I ever have ever been. So I, I spend almost my entire day in the gym. I love um, that. I train. I'm, I have 22 sessions scheduled a week and that is with taking a day off. So. Wow. Nice. So I want to talk a little bit more about you, uh, about like your mm-hmm. background and I don't know how to say, so you're from Ohio, but the town, is it Ka- Kano? Is it Kano? Kano? How Kaniat. do you say it? What is it? Kaniat. Kaniat. Mm-hmm. So I was looking into this place and it's pretty cool. They have the biggest D-Day reenactment we do. in the United States. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and Which is pretty cool. Have you ever been to that? Nope. No. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to listen. We're not gonna training, be- man. We're not gonna make you feel bad because I probably wouldn't even go either. I mean, I we they probably do stuff around here all the time, and I never go to it. So yeah, and now that I've like moved away, I'm like, wow, I really wish that I would have gone to that, but yeah, haven't haven't ever made it. I mean, my summers were spent training for wrestling, and it's mm-hmm. kind of all I've ever done. So I haven't really taken time to have fun until just recently. Well, I mean, you have fun. I so I see your travel videos and your <laughs> vlogs and all that stuff, <laughs> and. uh you do like the hot sauce challenges mm-hmm. and uh, our buddy Kyle over here, he, he did the one chip challenge too, but he did it at break at work for a 15 minute break. So, you know, all that <laughs> worked out. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Uh, and you want to know what, something else I did. I actually started to tell this story last night. I don't know if I did or not, but I used to wait tables at a casino here in Connecticut. Okay. And uh, I was I'm walking by this table one night and I hear these guys like huddled around and they're like talking or whatever. And uh, I see that they're like, betting each other to do some dumb shit. So I walk over and I notice that like nobody's doing it. So I'm like, Hey, what are you guys trying to do? And they're like, uh, I, I bet him $200. He wouldn't drink a pint of hickory barbecue sauce. I'm like, oh, what's the rules? And, he, and they said, you got to drink it and you can't puke for like 15 minutes afterwards. And then you get 200 bucks. I'm like, I'll do that. So I did it right. Boom. And when, as soon as I finished, I pointed to the bottle of habanero hot sauce. I said, I'll do a pint of that for 400 more. And I walked away 
And then I'm standing off to the side with my buddy Bones. And Bones is like, what the fuck are you staring at my table for? I'm like, dude, those guys are going to pay me $400 to drink a pint of habanero hot sauce. And I'm going to do it. Oh, my God. And uh, they called me over. I walked over. I said, uh, what's up? And they said, uh, we can't do it for four. We don't have enough money. But we'll do it for another two. And you don't have to do a full pint. You just got to do a whole bottle. So I poured a bottle into this thing and it was about three quarters of a pint mm -hmm. slammed a bottle i slammed a uh, bottle of habanero hot sauce for 200 dollars 200 dollars more i made 400 bucks in uh five minutes and walked i went into work at 5 p.m i went mm -hmm. home at 7 30 with 530 dollars in my pocket in a, in wow. a stomach ache. wow <laughs> so yeah. what's the hottest thing that you've ever eaten <laughs> um so i would say that the um the the mad dog sauce that i tried was definitely the hottest the one chip challenge sucked mainly because it was really dry mm -hmm. um i have a thing of uh really hot um peanuts death they're oh they're called death nuts and i've been avoiding doing those like the plague because i hear that they are absolutely terrible the same person that bought the one chip challenge for us at work <laughs> also purchased the death nut challenge mike Did you, i don't know if i told you that but no. she bought them and i told her you could keep them shits i'm not fucking doing it <laughs> because the one chip challenge was tough enough man that that was that was no joke rough yeah, no. It, it was terrible i was like i was like saliving like everywhere it was disgusting <laughs> Yeah, I'm watching them at work. I'm like, I'm not doing this at work. Get the hell out. I wouldn't do it anyways, but I'm not doing it at work of all places. I got to go. You got to go back to work like that? Get out of here. Um, you, you know what I did after 20 minutes of that uh, one chip challenge? I couldn't take it anymore. I was like sweating and I, I was like hurting. I went to the, we have an ice cream machine in our yeah. mess hall. <laughs> I, I bought like four ice cream sandwiches. And I just, <laughs> I kept taking a bite, like shoving them in my mouth and I'm just sitting there with an ice cream sandwich in my mouth like an asshole. Yep. But it didn't right. work. Okay. okay. I'm sure work is very happy about this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one thing that I, I loved when I was watching is your favorite movie. I I think I heard a ruckus. The Can you what? describe? I Oh, I said your favorite movie. I think I heard a ruckus. Can you describe the ruckus, sir? The Breakfast Club. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Because you, you, were, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I so that movie. I love that movie. I don't I know. I grew it. up watching that movie all the time, and I just <laughs> loved it. And I know that that was your your favorite movie. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure Kyle uh, is a fan also. I oh, do. I love that movie. I mean, who doesn't like Simple Minds? You know, at the end, don't you forget about you? Just jump up in the the pause. That is my favorite part. Is just at the end the. It's so powerful. I love it. Dude, Mike, uh, Alicia, this is what happens when you spill paint in the garage. Did yeah. I stutter? her? <laughs> what about you, dad? No, fuck you. No, what about you, dad? Fuck you. <sighs> yeah, dude, I, I can do that whole movie. Oh, yeah. And yep. I want you to know that a three-time world champion kickboxer, uh, Warrior Camp by Tommy Rodriguez. Tommy the Warrior Rodriguez is in the uh, in the comments. He said she is awesome. Great work ethic. Also, her tattoo is awesome. She looks like she's a fighting warrior. That's Thank what I'm you. talking about. Thank you. Uh, Mike, so, what do you say? Well, we're going to say, so, so talking about food, talking okay. about your video logs and all that stuff, you know, you're a foodie. You like to go out, try some food, and we see it on all your YouTube videos and stuff. So we decided, and what we've been doing, I don't know if you saw uh, John's interview from earlier. Mm -hmm. We've been doing brackets because it's March Madness. Mm -hmm. And why we're not doing basketball, though. We're just doing random stuff. And for you, we're going to do, Kyle. Baboom. Mar Mike and Mish's March Madness <laughs> bracket. Italian food. Oh, good. The world. Oh, God. Uh, oh no! That's right. This Are is gonna be tough. I'm, I'm Italian. Oh god! <laughs> oh hell yeah! That's why I did it. There's a reason. Oh yeah. Numero uno on the bracket. First matchup: chicken parm versus chicken wing. Chicken parm. All day. Not oh. even a hesitation. Nope. Okay, no hesitation. so there's no hesitation. I can't eat gluten and dairy, but if I get the choice to chicken parm, because I can have chicken wings any day. So, chicken <laughs> uh, uh, Michael, 
matchup number two. Baked stuffed shells versus sushi. Sushi. Oh, your grandmother would be so disappointed. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Lasagna versus tacos. Oh, God. This is the one that my grandma would be disappointed. <laughs> Uh, mm, you know, I'm not really a taco person I like burritos, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with lasagna here. Are you only doing that because of your grandma's lasagna? Is that my what? grandma has that's the not... best lasagna ever. <laughs> <laughs> I love tacos. Out like that was tough. I was looking at oh. that. I was sweating earlier thinking about it. I was like, oh my god, no, Michael. Like, real. All what right, pizza versus pulled pork sandwich on a plate, whatever. Pulled pork. Pulled pork. Pulled pork beat pizza. <laughs> I can I can eat meat. Pulled pork is my favorite meat. Like I don't know why I love it on almost anything. Yeah, I love I love rib, ribs are like my favorite. Oh, oh. John Lee Chalbeck says you're lying, Alicia. She is lying. I don't know what you're lying about. I'm not lying <laughs> about what, what? What? There was many questions here. We need a little. Yeah, what is she lying about, John? We yeah. need to be specific here, let, John. Let me know. Specific. But you gotta right. be you gotta be Pacific. Okay, Pacific. Round, <laughs> be Pacific. <laughs> round two, I believe chicken parm beat wings. I believe mm -hmm. sushi beat shells. So That's we are correct. going chicken parm versus sushi. Sushi. Holy shit! Sushi moves to the championship round, Mike. That oh man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other matchup was. Um, lasagna already, versus pulled pork. I already know the winner of the whole thing. <laughs> I think I do too. Yeah, I gotta I go with my grandma's lasagna. Was grandma's lasagna moves to the championship round yeah. to square off against the mighty sushi? Who takes that fight and moves to the greatest food on the planet according to Half Point? Um, only my grandmother's lasagna. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> mom's spaghetti. <laughs> so close. My mom actually was the one that made the um the stuffed shells. So sorry, mom. <laughs> Graham's lasagna. That's right. You heard it here. <laughs> John. <laughs> John, do you want me to read that one or just let everyone read it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, man! I think we just went off the rails. <laughs> well, that was fun. The, yeah. the the greatest food on the planet is your grandma's lasagna. Who yes, wouldn't know? <laughs> so Alicia Half Pint Zapatilla, she is eight and two as a professional mm -hmm. MMA fighter. Tell me before uh, we move on, I want to ask you about that combate fight down in Tucson, Arizona. Out in the sun, out in the fucking shadow, there was shadow mm -hmm. the sun. How was that? What was that like for you? Because had you ever fought outdoors like that and dealing with shadows and sun in your eyes and all that stuff? It seemed um, like it would be annoying. I never had to fight outside like that before. I practiced in a cage outside like that before, but never actually fought. Um, I had to basically use the sun to my advantage. So I would have to circle away so this way the sun was in her eyes and not in my eyes. It was, it was annoying. Yeah. And uh, you really showcased your wrestling at that point. You really uh, you really manhandled that girl. And, yeah, I had to ask about that because I was watching that, and I'm like, God mm -hmm. damn, I sweat a lot. <laughs> yeah. That, it was, I feel like it that was, was so hot. Cage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that was a good idea. That that the sunlight, that was bad. Like, bad, bad ring position or yeah, cage position. Hey, <laughs> The cage was really, really hot where the sun was hitting it. Oh, that's so weird. Like, I don't ever think about fighters, like, getting. <laughs> I, I never think about fighters getting sun in their eyes while they're fighting. It's very, yeah, it was just an odd, whole, like, thing. Yeah, I had to, whole, I had to like, change, a, like, a whole game plan. Like, all right, I got to be on this side of the cage. <laughs> right, right. Unreal. Unreal. Well, we totally uh, expect you to dominate the 115 pound division Thank you. Thank become you. the champ champ mm -hmm. and then move your way into the ufc what would be i want to ask you if you you know say a year what do you think like a year or two a year from now ufc or yeah. uh so yeah, a, year, I, I a year from now, a um, year from now can you see yourself scrapping with way lee or like is that your dream that way lee or how about um yeah. 
You know who you and Karate Hottie kind of remind me of each other. I'd, I'd I like to fight her. I will fight anybody that they put me up against. I have been training with some of the best. I've been training with Miranda Maverick. I've been training. Yep. I've trained with Tisha Torres a couple of times. I trained with her out in in Colorado. She's coming out next week to train with me. So um, I also trained with Randa Marcos. So I definitely know where I'm at in comparison to all of these girls. I feel like you just read my mind because I was going to say Tisha Torres. I, I believe you had a picture with her. Did you train yeah. with her before? Yeah, I trained with her, and now she's coming out to train for um, a possible maybe champ camp. Nice. Maybe. And you also mentioned uh, the Ma Fair, the Maverick. Yeah. And yep. you both were featured in a documentary <laughs> that came out yeah. March 13th. You want to mm -hmm. speak on that a little bit and how it was meeting some of those uh, – legend fighters and being in a documentary how was that like is it weird to be in a documentary like how did that feel and and how was the um the release party so the way that i got in the documentary was actually pretty pretty wild i showed up to the gym one day during my fight camp um i knew that Hanite was gonna be there she's another girl she's a really good boxer um the only reason why she's not pro yet is because she's trying to support tonga in the olympics um for boxing um but I went there to get some training in with her. It wasn't really, it was like one of my only bad days in fight camp. I didn't want to be there. I was like, mentally, I'm not here. But there was a guy filming a documentary. I got to put on my best face. I got to, you know, whatever. And he didn't know who I was until he, he got to know me. He's like, why haven't I know you, known you? Can I feature you in my movie? I'm like, definitely. So um, the way that it came out was pretty random, actually. And uh, the movie came out great. Um, the first whole portion is about me, and that was really cool. Um, because I don't know, it was it was a really cool experience. I've I've always wanted to be in movies and stuff, and that's like the first step. And also to see my name next to Matt Hughes and Pat Militage and Dan Severn was so cool. And like they are so down to earth. They are so humble. Um, Matt Hughes actually funny story. Matt Hughes tricked me into kissing him. <laughs> <laughs> He did the whole like I would like take a picture with him afterwards. He's like, oh, you know, take take another picture with me. You know, kiss me right here, and then you know, like, turned into it. Like, that was good. <laughs> now, Matt Hughes. Yeah, it came, it came out really good though. It was, like, awesome. Good I, we're looking forward to to watching it for sure. Um, um, so I'm not sure wanna... where it, I'm not sure where it'll be streaming, but I know that the producer's last movie was on Amazon Prime. So if I had to guess, it would probably be there, but should know within the next couple of weeks where it'll be released. When I talked to Jay Fish, he he had some information on that, and right now I can't remember. I thought he I thought he said Hulu. I thought he said like Hulu. Oh, that'd be cool too. I don't know. Yeah, really um, did when they wrap when they wrapped the filming of that? Had you had mm -hmm. won the title yet, or was that way done by then? Um, they so they filmed me during my um champ camp. So by the end of it they were able to put in at the end that i had won oh, my cool. um, world title and they threw a little bit of shade which whatever i'm gonna, I'm gonna let it slide because like uh they're just talking about the hardships and stuff of like fighting and then at one point it goes like some of us are college dropouts me and then it goes <laughs> oh, some of us are phd random maverick like cool <laughs> Wow. <laughs> hey, look. I got to tell you, I, I had Miranda on uh, Mission Accomplished. My, I have another podcast called Mission Accomplished. And one, that is maybe the most like time management person I've ever met yeah. in my life. I'm like, how the hell do you possibly do all the shit that you do? I don't understand it. She, 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 she goes for, she's going to school for a PhD. She's a mm -hmm. professional fighter for the biggest company in the world. She mm -hmm. teaches. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how is that even possible, yeah. man? I could barely get my kids ready for school in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually used to be a para pro. I used to work with special needs students, and um, I absolutely loved that job because um, you know I completed enough. I completed enough college to have an associate's degree, and you know, like actually work in a school and do something with it. So no, 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 you you dropped but, out. Um, I heard, I, I heard I, you I dropped had, out. I did. <laughs> um, I had to, um, but then reality of it was that. I couldn't be doing a job and absolutely put everything into this. Like my, I didn't have time to be doing the correct diet, drinking the amount of water that I need to be doing. And um, 
I keep myself very accountable. If, if I look at my schedule and I feel like there's not enough on it, I'm going to add something to it. Like I do fasted cardio every single morning for an hour and that's not even included in any of my training stuff. So like to live the lifestyle, I just had to fully commit. Nice. How long did they follow you around with the cameras? Did they spend one day with you a whole week? I mean, how does that work? Oh, it was just a day. Just a day, like a whole day beginning to, to end one whole day? Nope. Training. One training session. Really? Yep. Wow. Uh, wow. And they can, and, they can, and they, uh, wow. that's. I was thinking like, ah, oh, they're going to be back every day. Um, and you're I like, oh my God, will like, these guys ever leave the gym? <laughs> I think it was like two or three training sessions. Um, I was one of like the smaller people in it, but there was definitely a really big portion about me that I was very surprised about. Um, so yeah, I'm sure that they probably went out and like, stayed with like you know like matt hughes and like pat millich and stuff for like quite a while yeah but me no me just a couple, now, couple we, hours obviously we have not seen we have not seen the documentary but mm -hmm. who is the most featured fighter in it is it because i they got Jay Jay Fish on the poster, and like it's in it's from he Lucas from Saginaw, right? So it's yeah. like, so, is Jay, is Jay like the featured guy, or is it? No, um, I would say that it's probably um, Matt Hughes or Pat Melitage. Jason Reinhardt's part was like com comedic relief. It was hilarious. His part was my favorite part of the movie. I was laughing like every other second. Him and his wife are like phenomenal together nice we i i can't wait to see i want to see it i we've been we've known about it for a little while now because jay fish as mm -hmm. as kyle said has been on the show uh twice okay. now okay. uh so well on kyle's show twice so okay. and we've been trying to we've been like oh when's it coming out when's it coming out but hey soon enough we'll see it looking <laughs> forward to it now let me ask you this uh what are your feelings about bare knuckle fighting and uh could you ever see yourself developing the hands to go over into bare knuckle if say bare knuckle bkfc is very young right now mm -hmm. they don't even have a, i think they have one 115 pound girl signed to the uh signed to the promotion mm -hmm. they don't have females your size at the moment but they are the fastest growing company in combat mm -hmm. sports right now could you see yourself ever uh taking the gloves off and throwing so some knuckles they have been bugging me non-stop <laughs> well i wonder why i don't even understand <laughs> Really? Um, being honest, I have I have really good boxing. Take the take the kicks out of it, and we're just doing stand up. I think that I could do really well. Just got to get on the inside and hit hard. Just got to game plan it well. Um, but maybe down the line I could, like let's say like end of my career, um, like after I already beat Whaley, got the got the champ 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 stuff going on, and uh, maybe not champ, gonna champ, say champ. not gonna say no because. Um, I would like to uh, just get my name out there. Like, I want to get into broadcasting and into, into commentating. I want to be the on-screen personality. So, you know, like, if, if that, doing that at the end of my career, like Paige Van Zandt is doing, like, maybe. Like, pay me enough money and I will fight Paige Van Zandt. Are you saying that Paige Van Zandt's at the end of her career? Um, no, I, I just think you just threw shade at Paige, and I think <laughs> I think I think we just made a fight. I think I'm pretty sure we just made a fight. Paige versus how Alicia. dare you? No, listen, Kyle. there's no shade being thrown there. But if I was her, I was, if I was her, I would be at the end of my career. She is making so much money off modeling. She's yeah. already been in the UFC. She's already proved oh, that yeah. she's a badass. She's already modeling and in TV shows. Why? Why fight? That's the question everybody asks. Like, why? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I see uh, like the B the BKFC. I, they 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 talk about this a lot. Listening to all like David Feldman's interviews and stuff like that. Uh, if you if you follow the like a, a lot of uh, any media that happens mm -hmm. with like some of their um crew, you know, some of the higher higher people like Nate Shook and, and Dave Feldman, <laughs> they talk about homegrown stars, you know, and I think that that's really what they're, they're after. And they probably see you, you're young. They're probably like, oh, you know, she's a spitfire. She's got a good personality. Let's get her on here. And they want a star to begin <laughs> there. And that way they can, you know what I mean? Like, definitely, they don't want that, you know, they get a lot of people that are on the way up or on the way down, but they don't have a lot of home. They don't have, I don't think any homegrown stars really. I mean, they, there's, there's Barnett, and Bedford, mm -hmm. but 
Yeah, I think there's that a, that's there's, there's a few. I would I would something that I would ever do long term, like maybe a couple fights, but um, I I don't support and the pretty face movement. I support, you know, you're a pretty woman. Use it to your advantage. I don't want to. I don't want to fuck up the rest of my life or my career. Like, it's it's just what it is for me. Mm-hmm. Alicia, how old are you? You're 23 years old. You're 23. Uh, I, she's. I just I just turned 26. 25. Oh my god, oh. 26. You just turned 26. When? 26. Less than you a month ago. So goddamn young. You know what I was doing at 26 years old? I was getting fucking drunk. Oh yeah, February every, 28th. Right. Every single night of the week, and uh. You know, going to bed at 6 a.m. so I can get up at noon and go to work. You're over here fighting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've never really had a party stage in my life. It's kind of always been down to business for me. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. That I mean, sense. like after, after my world title fight, I dropped everything and I traveled half of the country. And that is the coolest thing I've ever done. That was the most fun thing I've ever done. It's probably the only thing that I've ever done actually for myself. So. Yeah. It's funny. I just asked, "Hey, uh, whoa, when when was your birthday?" Very first line, born February twenty eighth. Okay, it's right mm -hmm. here on my screen. I, I'm in. <laughs> I took these notes. I didn't even pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. Mike's not my father in law's birthday, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. So you just had a birthday? It was mm -hmm. like three yeah. two weeks ago. What'd you do? You know anything cool? Um, I went out and I saw my family, and uh, I don't. My family lives like four and a half hours away, so I don't really get to see them that often. So that was probably the best thing, obviously. I love seeing my niece. Um, got to drink a little bit of wine. Eat some more Tanya? Um, no, actually. <laughs> nah. That, that's more of the holiday stuff. Well, Mike, we have kept her long enough. Yeah. I think we should uh, allow the champion to have the floor. You can shout out any sponsors, anybody you want to thank, or anybody you want to say what's up to. And then we'll let you go on your way because you got to go back to doing some champ shit. You know what I mean? Definitely. Okay. So we got. So I want to give a big thank you to John Chalbeck for um, getting me on the show and also helping with my boxing. Um, I know that he said that we have been working together for so long, but um, as of the past year, we really started working together like a lot. Like we started working together at least once or twice a week just me and him and big thank you to him um the biggest thank you that i can give is to phoenix athletics they have sponsored me um and they've leveled up my game in ways that nobody else could have i'm a completely different athlete if you watch strength and conditioning videos from this year from now to a year ago you you wouldn't even believe it's the same person and honestly watching my fights just looking at my pictures you would not be able to tell it's the same person um so I need to thank them, like Chris Down and his wife, Hillary Down. Um, and then a big thank you to James Gray, my head coach. Um, he has helped me. Like, he came up to me at my first fight, the, the fight that John gave me gloves at. And he he didn't know who I was, but he came up and he was like, Alicia, what I just witnessed in the, cha in the cage, you can be a world champion. And I switched gyms and look where I'm at now. So... Huge thank you to him. And then um, a big thank you to Tabitha Watkins because she's my main training partner. And then a huge thank you to Christian Woodmansey. Um, he always flies out to help me with my training with my training camps. I don't know if anybody knows him. He's a he's a small guy. Um, he's he's one of the best black belts probably in the world. I And um, he kicks my ass. And he helps me level up in ways that um, I don't really think that anybody else would because it's basically my size. He knows what I go through. He knows what's going to help me. Um, and then he was thanking my parents. My parents are always my big support system. So couldn't do it without them. And shout outs. I mean, I guess you can follow me on Instagram. And I got your, I got your, uh, I got your uh, social uh, media. Cool. I had them thrown up there. There you go. Everybody yeah, my, should follow oh, her. So there my you YouTube, go. My YouTube. If you go to youtube.com slash half pint six or just type in my name, you will find all of my fun videos. And uh, yeah. I just watched you shotgun a uh, energy drink. Yeah, I did. It was a recovery drink. Um, the one before that, uh, people love my one bite challenges. So what? you I, know what? I What's really funny? Food, and I shoved it in my mouth, and I tried to eat it in one bite. And everyone loves them. I I just opened up my YouTube real quick, and uh, 
Let's see. Oh, I just hit my microphone. What is that right there? Oh, it's right in my one feed. By one by challenge. Yeah, one it's right ever. in my feed. As soon as I open it up, these phones, they listen. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Get rid of that phone. It's listening to us. How crazy is that? Oh, I actually pressed play by accident. Boom. That was very unprofessional. Well, thank you for the view. I'm getting fired. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on, Alicia. I hope you are in the cage sooner than later. I, I hope Invicta has an event soon that we could all get to see you in action. Uh -huh. uh, you're an extremely impressive individual. Um, for those who don't know, I mean, I don't want to like, for those who don't know, she is four foot 11 and 105. Pounds. This girl is a little girl <laughs> and she fucking tosses these people around. Like, the what are you deadlift? Just can I ask you that? What are you doing? I rack pull. Uh, I don't really deadlift because deadlifting hurts my hurts my back. A rack pull is basically the same as a deadlift, but instead of hurt like targeting your lower back, it targets your middle back. So I rack pull. Um, want to say I did three thirty five. Nice. All right, bye. All right, Mike. Mike. Mike, you can go now. Uh, no, I only. I better that. go start practicing. We got yeah. a deadlift now in our friggin' test. So. <laughs> no, I I used to be um like a real gym rat and like the, the three typical um, powerlifting things that bench squat and deadlift were like my thing. So I always, I, I, I'm curious about someone small, like you 335 on a rack pull is pretty good. I mean, Thank on you. a freeway. Thank you. I wonder what you could do on a freeway. What do you think? 315 you could do on three, freeway? One rep? <laughs> you know, you don't have to pull it far, Alicia. I, I don't, so I kind of I kind of cheat, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, Mike, what do you got to say? I'm gonna I'm gonna say thank you very much for coming on. You're you're an inspiration and you're a champion, and I can't wait to see you do thank more you. champ shit. And I want to see you be champ champ for sure, Mike. Thank I'll you. let you say say you so long. Thank you for coming on the show. It was a pleasure doing the research. Now we know all about you. So looking forward to your next fight. And like Kyle said, listen, if we can get there, we're going to get there. We're trying to do this this, this podcast and, and maybe we can get out of the army, retire, and just do this and go follow everyone fighting because it's definitely way more interesting than what <laughs> well, we're doing. You. I had a great time on this podcast. Thank you. Awesome. Hell yeah. Good. It's much this is much better than a deployment. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. This is what we want to do. We want to bring fighters on, find out about their, their, you know, their, their, uh, professional life, their personal life, and then have some fun. I mean, why not? I mean, life's too short. Let's have some fun. Right. All right. And, and, and let's ask her what kind of dog she has before we let her go take I care of her two, dog. I'm, I have two dogs. Um, well, I have one dog and I'm watching two dogs right now. So my roommate, um, Tabitha, also my training partner she is down in tennessee for a training session for um uh, a tournament so i have her dog and I, just, I honestly don't really know what he is i know he's like a beagle or something like that um and my dog is a miniature pincher so they are out there going wild right now <laughs> they were good for a little while yeah. <laughs> well that's a sign right there <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Keep doing your thing. Thank Keep you. on climbing. Keep, you know, go ahead and conquer the 105 verse like you already have. Go, go get the 115 strap and get to the UFC. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you down the road a little bit. All right. All right. Sounds good. Have a good All night. Right. All right. Bye. Thanks you for too. coming on. Bye bye. <laughs> Michael, Michael, that was Alicia Zapatilla. God bless both of you. That's what somebody said in the comments. Woo! Yeah. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Dude, that was fucking awesome. I mean, I got to tell you, man. Have, have we ever had a bad guest? I don't, I don't think so. I, don't think I so. Kyle, this is getting more funner and more funner. I'm pretty every sure. If, single I don't time. know if, dude, I don't know if more funner is proper English. You, you, you sound like you dropped out of school. Um, like Alicia Zapatilla, according to a I, documentary. You know what? I did. No, I didn't. I graduated <laughs> high school, but I didn't go to college because I was way too smart for that. And, and you were doing way more funner shit. Yeah, I got way more fun stuff to do. Yeah, fuck. Can't man. bring me over to Dude, college. Awesome. I ain't doing hey, that. hey, so let's recap that real quick. We, we, we got we had we did the we did the mission accomplished March Madness bracket with 145 pound BKFC fighters and John Lee Chalbeck. Narrowed it down to Tyler Goodjohn. So, if Tyler Goodjohn, if you're watching El Tornado, 
Why don't we sign that contract? Why don't we get that fucking fight going? Yeah. What let's the do, hell? Let's do it in May. Let's do it in Miami. Let's do it in front of 14,000 people. Let's do it in front of Kyle and uh, Kyle and Mike. Mike and Mish. The Mike and Mish. The Mike and Mish show live from Miami to see Tyler Goodjohn. I think we should do that. Then mm -hmm. we did a little uh, who's smarter. Well, yeah. Who's smarter. I thought that was great. I think that they thought it was fun. <laughs> These <laughs> random questions. Yeah. and um, They're really fun. Yeah, and you know what? And those questions were absolutely fucking bananas. I, I loved them. And uh, it's really about guessing and that shit. But you know what? She was smarter than her coach. And then her grandma's lasagna. Did we did we expect anything else out of an Italian girl? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I think she stayed true to her Italian heritage. That lasagna, you can't get rid of that. I mean, shit, the, the grand, grand would be running around hitting it with that wooden spoon. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. Sushi over my lasagna. Uh, dude, so, I, would, I was just telling somebody. Doing that. I, I had some really good friends. Uh, I, I have some really good friends at the Tamboras in Norwich. And I, and I actually mentioned John Tambora last night. We used to go over to the Tamboras in high school. And they had the typical, like, movie Italian family where Graham was always cooking in the kitchen. Always cooking. Always had three fucking pots on the stove. I don't know what the hell she was cooking half the time. But we'd walk in, and she'd be like, oh, boys, you guys hungry? Oh, sit down. She'd feed us every fucking time. And uh, John was like this foul-mouthed, you know, old Italian guy. Their dad, their grandpa's name was Sambino. And we'd be like, Graham, where, where's Joey and uh, where's Joe and, and Aunt? Oh, I'm pretty sure they're out back smoking them marijuana cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you put some hands out, and then she puts a meatball in it, and you eat it from oh, your hand. Dude. Uh, dude, hold up, hold up. Joe Ivy says, I want Mike to do a full podcast in that accent. What accent I, were you talking Technically, it's... I, I'm doing a thicker accent of my own accent. I really, it's what it is. Yeah, if I get Rhode to Island Joe, I, Joe Ivy, if I get to talking, uh, sometimes, you know, some people can't understand what I'm saying, you know? I get a little bit, I, I have that, that, that Rhode Island, that thick Rhode Island accent. Sometimes I get a little crazy. Oh, shit. Brad Williams says marijuana cigarettes. Yeah. I think Monica's going to have to rewind. You're going to like this, Monica. You got to rewind the show. Monica, you got to go back and watch this. This is a good one. Oh, so, yeah. any anyways, Mike, this is a fucking blast. It always is, man. We always have a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody who's watching, thank you for tuning in. We still got a, quite a few people watching. Um, I got some good news for everybody out there. I got some really good news. The shirts came in. I get them yep. tomorrow. Yep. Uh, I'm getting the shirts tomorrow. Shorts. Black and gray, mission accomplished, flag on the sleeve, flag on the back, American made, veteran owned, fucking badass mission accomplished shirts are now back in stock. I'm about to sell three quarters of it tomorrow because I already have a bunch of orders in. But you know what? That leaves a quarter for all you guys that want to get a shirt. Uh -huh. Go ahead and order one. Instant message, uh, message me. Uh, DM me, let me know your sizes and your colors that you want, how many you want. The $25 a piece. Uh, right now, we are just getting off the ground, so everything's through Venmo. So, uh, we you message me, we can pay through Venmo. Appreciate everybody. And, uh, what do you guys say, Mike? Say soon, we gotta, we're gonna have all sorts of things going on. We're gonna get more mission accomplished shirts, we're gonna get some Mike and Miss shirts, we gotta get some. Crop tops, some tank tops, some golf shirts. balls, some golf shirts. Some we got we got some requests for golf shirts. We got um some, some, somebody, I don't know, koozies. Somebody, somebody I don't somebody know. was like, uh, when are you gonna do snapbacks and uh and fitteds, man? I'm like, oh whew. Birkenstocks, and, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do some Jesus joggers. We're gonna get them all, buddy. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Afraid uh, of Felcha from Cranston. Yeah, wait, wait, wait till we get them uh wait till we get them uh mission mike and mish uh, condoms out on the street mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a big drill weekend shirts that's what i'm talking about dave get them brad thank you guys all for tuning in uh i don't know what that means monica but you know us 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 maybe oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, or yeah, us yeah. us us I don't oh, know. Yeah. Oos, oos, oos. <laughs> oos 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 yeah. All right, buddy. So why don't, right. we, why don't we peace out to everybody here? Thank you for all tuning in. Um, hey, oh, before we go. Hey, oh, A-E-I-O-U and sometimes why. A-E-I-O-U and sometimes why. 
Our boy Matt Lyle is having a little bit of trouble getting out of the country because of uh, our United States government is a pain in the ass when it comes to uh, visas and, and passports and all that bullshit. This so, is number one bullshit. Number one bullshit. Send me location. Send me location. Um, so Matt Lyle was supposed to be fighting for the world title, for uh, Muay Thai world title down in Mexico against Eric Flores Saturday, March 20th. It's not looking good. Because, of course, uh, he's having problems with his visa and his passport and all that shit. So, pay attention tomorrow. Me and Mike, and Mike and Mish might be having an emergency uh, emergency press conference show. Maybe a half an hour, maybe, you know, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour with Matt Lyle and maybe his coach, Tommy Rodriguez, to discuss the the happenings of why he's not getting out of the country and getting into mexico um it's a it's a fucking shame he has been in contact with the with the promotion he has been in contact with flores they will this fight will happen he will fight for the title might not be saturday but you know they might move it to april they might you know move it to the United States at a different venue venue uh we'll talk about that tomorrow with Matt Lightning Lyle mm -hmm. and Tommy Rodriguez um, just want to keep you guys informed because he had been on the show a couple times and talked about his world title fight and he's an absolute monster and he's going to take that title back to the United States for us yes. and you. So I was very excited to, to hear about, and, and I would hope and to see this fight. So I, I feel really bad. Uh, so everybody stay tuned for a time, you know, Kyle and I, we got to come up with a time, talk to, to Matt, see, see what's going on and uh, we'll come up with a time. I talked to him. We're busy bit. over here. Yeah, we're busy. Bu we're busy. We have drill weekend this weekend. We're doing some army stuff this weekend. Um, but it's looking like we're going to try to go. If we're going to do something with Matt tomorrow night to put the information out for everybody that was interested, uh, we're looking like prime time, 8, 830, maybe tomorrow night, just for, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, just to let you all know. Um, Tommy Rodriguez is in there. Yeah, it says, awesome. Thank you. Thanks. He is ready. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in, Tommy. Yeah, we want we want Matt to make it down there. We want him to win that title. We want him to bring it home. So tomorrow night, just stay tuned. We'll let you guys know. Pay attention to the page. Uh, look for updates. And um, with that said, I think it's time, Mike. We uh, we call it a night, and uh, we all see you guys next week, next Wednesday. I got Julian Lane. Let me bang, bro. Mm -hmm. Julian Lane mm -hmm. on Mission Accomplished mm -hmm. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I got, uh, I got, I'm going to have my brother, my brother, the U.S. Army Ranger veteran back on the show. Back. He's back. Ryan Mish coming back to the show. That is always an entertainment talk, entertaining talk. Oh, um, yeah. That so, guy like, wants to go back to the Civil War. That's what kind of guy he is. Yeah, that's what he is. So next Wednesday, Julian Lane. Ryan Mish, and next Thursday we have Crystal Pittman. Crystal recently signed, right? Crystal Wish. Pittman, BKFC. Yep, the redheaded beauty herself. Yep, the rugged beauty, and she signed with Bare Knuckle Management, I believe. And we may have another guest on too. We're working on some people, so we'll see. Yeah, we're working on a few things. So thank you for working tuning in. Ting. Peace out, everyone. I'll go into the bathroom. Bye. Go to the bathroom. <laughs>